Sindh, Sindhi, SN Urdu, Sindh is one of the four provinces of Pakistan, in the southeast of the country. Historically home to the Sindhi people, it is also locally known as Marin. Sindh is the third largest province of Pakistan by area, and second largest province by population after Punjab. Sindh is bordered by Baluchistan province to the west, and Punjab province to the north. Sindh also borders the Indian states of Gujarat and Rajasthan to the east, and Arabian Sea to the south. Sindh's landscape consists mostly of alluvial plains flanking the Indus River, the Thar Desert in the eastern portion of the province closest to the border with India, and the Kirthar Mountains in the western part of Sindh. Sindh has Pakistan's second largest economy, while its provincial capital Karachi is Pakistan's largest city and financial hub, and hosts the headquarters of several multinational banks. Sindh is home to a large portion of Pakistan's industrial sector and contains two of Pakistan's commercial seaports, Port Bin Qasim and the Karachi port. The remainder of Sindh has an agriculture-based economy, and produces fruit, food consumer items, and vegetables for the consumption other parts of the country. Sindh is also the center of Pakistan's pharmaceutical industry. Sindh is known for its distinct culture, which is strongly influenced by Sufism, an important marker of Sindhi identity for both Hindus. Sindh has Pakistan's highest percentage of Hindu residents and Muslims in the province. Several important Sufi shrines are located throughout the province, which attract millions of annual devotees. Sindh's capital, Karachi, is Pakistan's most ethnically diverse city, with Muhajirs, or descendants of those who migrated to Pakistan from India after 1947 and throughout the 1950s and 1960s, making up the majority of the population. Karachi and other urban centers of Sindh have seen ethnic tensions between the native Sindhis and the Muhajirs boil over into violence on several occasions. Sindh is home to two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the historical monuments at Makli, and the archaeological ruins at Manjodaro. Etymology The word Sindh is derived from the Sanskrit term Sindhu literally meaning river, which is a reference to Indus River. The official spelling, Sindh was discontinued in 1988 by an amendment passed in Sindh Assembly. The Greeks who conquered Sindh in 325 BC under the command of Alexander the Great rendered it as Indus, hence the modern Indus. The ancient Iranians referred to everything east of the river Indus as Hind. When the British came to India in the 17th century, they applied the Greek version of the name Sindh to all of South Asia, calling it India. Pakistan's name is derived from an acronym, in which the letter S stands for Sindh. History Prehistoric period Sindh's first known village settlements date as far back as 7000 BCE. Permanent settlements at Mergar, currently in Baluchistan, to the west expanded into Sindh. This culture blossomed over several millennia and gave rise to the Indus Valley Civilization around 3000 BCE. The Indus Valley Civilization rivaled the contemporary civilizations of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia in size and scope, numbering nearly half a million inhabitants at its height with well-planned grid cities and sewer systems. The primitive village communities in Baluchistan were still struggling against a difficult highland environment, a highly cultured people were trying to assert themselves at Khat Diji. This was one of the most developed urban civilizations of the ancient world. It flourished between the 25th century BCE and 1500 BCE in the Indus Valley sites of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. The people had a high standard of art and craftsmanship and a well-developed system of quasi-pictographic writing which remains undeciphered. The remarkable ruins of the beautifully planned towns, the brick buildings of the common people, roads, public baths, and the covered drainage system suggest a highly organized community. According to some accounts, there is no evidence of large palaces or burial grounds for the elite. The grand and presumably holy site might have been the Great Bath, which is built upon an artificially created elevation. This indigenous civilization collapsed around 1700 BCE. The cause is hotly debated and may have been a massive earthquake, which dried up the Gagar River. Skeletons discovered in the ruins of Mon Jo Daro, Mount of Dead, 
were thought to indicate that the city was suddenly attacked and the population was wiped out, but further examinations showed that the marks on the skeletons were due to erosion and not of violence. Early history The ancient city of Rorica, identified with modern Aror, Rory, was capital of the Savira kingdom, and finds mentioned early Buddhist literature as a major trading center. Sindh finds mention in the Hindu epic Mahabharata as being part of Bharatvarsha. Sindh was conquered by the Persian Achaemenid Empire in the 6th century BC. In the late 4th century BC, Sindh was conquered by a mixed army led by Macedonian Greeks under Alexander the Great. Alexander described his encounters with these trans-Indus tribes of Sindh. I am involved in the land of lions and brave people, where every foot of the ground is like a well of steel, confronting my soldier. You have brought only one son into the world, but everyone in this land can be called an Alexander." The region remained under control of Greek satraps for only a few decades. After Alexander's death, there was a brief period of Seleucid rule, before Sindh was traded to the Mauryan Empire led by Chandragupta in 305 BC. During the rule of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka, the Buddhist religion spread to Sindh. Mauryan rule ended in 185 BC with the overthrow of the last king by the Shunga dynasty. In the disorder that followed, Greek rule returned when Demetrius I of Bactria led a Greco-Bactrian invasion of India and annexed most of the northwestern lands, including Sindh. Demetrius was later defeated and killed by a usurper, but his descendants continued to rule Sindh and other lands as the Indo-Greek kingdom. Under the reign of Menander I, many Indo-Greeks followed his example and converted to Buddhism. In the late 2nd century BC, Scythian tribes shattered the Greco-Bactrian Empire and invaded the Indo-Greek lands. Unable to take the Punjab region, they invaded South Asia through Sindh, where they became known as Indo-Scythians later Western satraps. By the 1st century AD, the Kushan Empire annexed Sindh. Kushans under Kanishka were great patrons of Buddhism and sponsored many building projects for local beliefs. Ahirs were also found in large numbers in Sindh. Iberia country of Abira tribe was in southern Sindh. The Kushan Empire was defeated in the mid 3rd century AD by the Sassanid Empire of Persia, who installed vassals known as the Kushanches in these far eastern territories. These rulers were defeated by the Kitarites in the late 4th century. It then came under the Gupta Empire after dealing with the Kitarites. By the late 5th century, attacks by Hephthalite tribes known as the Indo-Hephthalites or Hunas Huns broke through the Gupta Empire's northwestern borders and overran much of northwestern India. Concurrently, Rohr dynasty ruled parts of the region for several centuries. Afterwards, Sindh came under the rule of Emperor Harshavardhan, then the Rai dynasty around 478. The Rais were overthrown by Chachar of Ellore around 632. The Brahmin dynasty ruled a vast territory that stretched from Multan in the north to the Ran of Kutch. Alor was their capital. Topic: <inaudible> Arrival of Islam. In 712, Muhammad bin Qasim conquered the Sindh and Indus Valley, bringing South Asian societies into contact with Islam. Dahir was an unpopular Hindu king that ruled over a Buddhist majority and that Chach of Alore and his kin were regarded as usurpers of the earlier Buddhist Rai dynasty, a view questioned by those who note the diffuse and blurred nature of Hindu and Buddhist practices in the region, especially that of the royalty to be patrons of both and those who believe that Chach may have been a Buddhist. The forces of Muhammad bin Qasim defeated Raja Dahir in alliance with the Hindu Jats and other regional governors. In 711 AD, Muhammad bin Qasim led an Umayyad force of 20,000 cavalry and five catapults. Muhammad bin Qasim defeated the Raja Dahir, and captured the cities of Alor, Multan and Dabal. Sindh became the easternmost state of the Umayyad Caliphate and was referred to as Sindh on Arab maps, with lands further east known as Hind. Muhammad bin Qasim built the city of Mansura as his capital. The city then produced famous historical figures such as Abu Mashar Sindhi, Abu Adha al Sindhi, Abu Raja Sindhi, and Sindh ibn Ali. At the port city of Dabal, most of the Baware embraced Islam and became known as Sindhi sailors, who were renowned for their in navigation, geography, and languages. After bin Qasim left, the Umayyads ruled Sindh through the Habari dynasty. 
By the year 750, Dabal modern Karachi was second only to Basra. Sindhi sailors from the port city of Dabal voyaged to Basra, Busha, Muscat, Aden, Kilwa, Zanzibar, Sofala, Malabar, Sri Lanka, and Java, where Sindhi merchants were known as the Santri. During the power struggle between the Umayyads and the Abbasids, the Habari dynasty became semi independent and was eliminated, and Mansura was invaded by Sultan Mahmud Ghaznavi. Sindh then became an easternmost state of the Abbasid Caliphate ruled by the Sumero dynasty until the Siege of Baghdad 1258. Mansura was the first capital of the Sumra dynasty and the last of the Habari dynasty. Muslim geographers, historians and travelers such as Al-Masudi, Ibn Haqqal, Istakri, Ahmed ibn Sal al-Balki, Al-Tabari, Baladari, Nizami, Al-Biruni, Saadi Shirazi, Ibn Battuta and Khatib Celebi wrote about or visited the region, sometimes using the name, Sindh, for the entire area from the Arabian Sea to the Hindu Kush. <laughs> Sumra dynasty period When Sindh was under the Arab Umayyad Caliphate, the Arab Habari dynasty was in control. The Umayyads appointed Aziz al-Habari as the governor of Sindh. Habaris ruled Sindh until Sultan Mahmud Ghaznavi defeated the Habaris in 1024. Sultan Mahmud Ghaznavi viewed the Abbasid Caliphate to be the caliphs thus he removed the remaining influence of the Umayyad Caliphate in the region and Sindh fell to Abbasid control following the defeat of the Habaris. The Abbasid Caliphate then appointed al kafi from Samara, Sumero means of Samara in Sindhi. The new governor of Sindh was to create a better, stronger and stable government. Once he became the governor, he allotted several key positions to his family and friends, thus al kafif or Sardar Khafif Sumero formed the Rajput Sumero dynasty in Sindh, and became its first ruler. Until the siege of Baghdad 1258, the Sumro dynasty was the Abbasid Caliphate's functionary in Sindh, but after that it became independent. When the Sumro dynasty lost ties with the Abbasid Caliphate after the siege of Baghdad 1258, the Sumer ruler Dodo I established their rule from the shores of the Arabian Sea to the Punjab in the north and in the east to Rajasthan and in the west to Pakistani Baluchistan. The Sumros were one of the first indigenous Muslim dynasties in Sindh of Parmar Rajput origin. They were the first Muslims to translate the Quran into the Sindhi language. The Samas created a chivalrous culture in Sindh, which eventually facilitated their rule centered at Mansura. It was later abandoned due to changes in the course of the Puran River. They ruled for the next 95 years until 1351. During this period, Kutch was ruled by the Sama dynasty, who enjoyed good relations with the Sumras in Sindh. Since the Sumro dynasty lost its support from the Abbasid Caliphate, the sultans of Delhi wanted a piece of Sindh. The Sumros successfully defended their kingdom for about 36 years, but their dynasties soon fell to the might of the Sultanate of Delhi's massive armies such as the Tuluks and the Khaljis. Sama dynasty period In 1339 Jam Unar founded a Sindhi Muslim Rajput Sama dynasty and challenged the sultans of Delhi. He used the title of the Sultan of Sindh. The Sama tribe reached its peak during the reign of Jam Nizamuddin II also known by the nickname Jam Nindo. During his reign from 1461 to 1509, Nindo greatly expanded the new capital of Thatta and its Makli Hills, which replaced Dabal. He patronized Sindhi art, architecture and culture. The Sama had left behind a popular legacy especially in architecture, music and art. Important court figures included the famous poet Qazi Qadal, Sardar Darya Khan, Moltis Khan, Makhdoom Balawal and the theologian Qazi Qadan. However, Thatta was a port city, unlike garrison towns, it could not mobilize large armies against the Argon and Tarhan Mongol invaders, who killed many regional Sindhi Murs and Emirs loyal to the Sama. Some parts of Sindh still remained under the sultans of Delhi and the ruthless Argons and the Tarkhan sacked Thatta during the rule of Jam Ferozuddin. <laughs> Migration of Balak According to Dr. Akhtar Balak, professor at University of Karachi, the Balochi migrated from Baluchistan during the Little Ice Age and settled in Sindh and Punjab. The Little Ice Age is conventionally defined as a period extending from the 16th to the 19th centuries, or alternatively, from about 1300 to about 1850. 
According to Professor Balak, the climate of Baluchistan was very cold during this epoch and the region was uninhabitable during the winters so the Balak people emigrated in waves to Sindh and Punjab. Mughal era In the year 1524, the few remaining Sindhi emirs welcomed the Mughal Empire and Babur dispatched his forces to rally the Argans and the Tarkans, branches of a Turkic dynasty. In the coming centuries, Sindh became a region loyal to the Mughals, a network of forts manned by cavalry and musketeers further extended Mughal power in Sindh. In 1540 a mutiny by Sher Shah Suri forced the Mughal Emperor Humayun to withdraw to Sindh, where he joined the Sindhi Emir Hussein Imrani. In 1541 Humayun married Hamida Banu Begum, who gave birth to the infant Akbar at Umarkot in the year 1542. During the reign of Akbar the Great, Sindh produced scholars and others such as Mir Ahmed Nasrallah Thatva, Tahir Muhammad Thatva and Mir Ali Sir Thatva and the Mughal chronicler Abul Fazl ibn Mubarak and his brother the poet Faizi was a descendant of a Sindhi Sheikh family from Rel, Sawistan in Sindh. Abul Fazl ibn Mubarak was the author of Akbarnama an official biographical account of Akbar and the Ain i Akbari a detailed document recording the administration of the Mughal Empire. Shah Jahan carved a subha imperial province, covering Sindh, called Thatta after its capital, out of Multan, further bordering on the Ajmer and Gujarat subhas as well as the rival Persian Safavid Empire. During the Mughal period, Sindhi literature began to flourish and historical figures such as Shah Abdul Latif Bittai, Sulatan al Auliya Muhammad Zaman, and Sashal Sarmast became prominent throughout the land. In 1603, Shah Jahan visited the state of Sindh. At Thatta, he was generously welcomed by the locals after the death of his father Jahangir. Shah Jahan ordered the construction of the Shah Jahan Mosque, which was completed during the early years of his rule under the supervision of Mirza Ghazi Beg. During his reign, in 1659 in the Mughal Empire, Muhammad Salah Tatawi of Thatta created a seamless celestial globe with Arabic and Persian inscriptions using a wax casting method. Sindh was home to very famous wealthy merchant rulers such as Mir Bayar of Sindh, whose great wealth had attracted the close ties with the Sultan bin Ahmad of Oman. In the year 1701, the Kalhora Nawabs were authorized in a firman by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb to administer Subha Sindh. From 1752 to 1762, Marathas collected chath or tributes from Sindh. Maratha power was decimated in the entire region after the Third Battle of Panipat in 1761. In 1762, Mian Ghulam Shah Kalhoro brought stability in Sindh, he reorganized and independently defeated the Marathas and their prominent vassal the Rao of Kutch in the Thar Desert and returned victoriously. After the Sikhs annexed Multan, the Kalhora dynasty supported counterattacks against the Sikhs and defined their borders. In 1783, a firman which designated Mir Fateh Ali Khan Talpur as the new Nawab of Sindh, and mediated peace, particularly after the Battle of Halani and the defeat of the ruling Kalhora by the Talpur Baloch tribes. Talpurs <laughs> The Talpur tribe migrated from Dara Ghazi Khan in Punjab to Sindh on the invitation of Kalhora to help them organize unruly Baloch tribes living in Sindh. Talpurs, who learned the Sindhi language, settled in northern Sindh. Very soon they united all the Baloch tribes of Sindh and formed a confederacy against the Kalhora dynasty. The Talpur Baloch soon gained power, overthrowing the Kalhora after the Battle of Halani to conquer and rule Sindh and other parts of present-day Pakistan, from 1783 to 1843. British East India Company forces led by General Charles James Napier overthrew the Talpur Baloch in 1843. <laughs> <laughs> British Raj In 1802, when Mir Ghulam Ali Khan Talpur Baloch succeeded as the Talpur Nawab, internal tensions broke out in the state. As a result, the following year the Maratha Empire declared war on Sindh and Barar Subha, during which Arthur Wellesley took a leading role causing much early suspicion between the emirs of Sindh and the British Empire. The British East India Company made its first contacts in the Sindhi port city of Thatta, which according to a report was a city as large as London containing 50,000 houses which were made of stone and mortar with large verandas some three or four stories high. The city has 3,000 looms. 
The textiles of Sindh were the flower of the whole produce of the East, the international commerce of Sindh gave it a place among that of nations, Thatta has 400 schools and 4,000 dhows at its docks, the city is guarded by well-armed sepoys." British and Bengal Presidency forces under General Charles James Napier arrived in Sindh in the mid-19th century and conquered Sindh in February 1843. The Baloch coalition led by Talpur Baloch's under Mir Nasir Khan Talpur Baloch was defeated at the Battle of Miani during which 5,000 Talpur Baloch were killed. Shortly afterwards, Hoshu Shidi commanded another army at the Battle of Dubbo, where 5,000 Baloch were killed. The first Aga Khan helped the British in their conquest of Sindh. As a result, he was granted a lifetime pension. A British journal by Thomas Postons mentions the captive Sindhi emirs. The emirs as being the prisoners of Her Majesty. They are maintained in strict seclusion, they are described as broken hearted and miserable men, maintaining much of the dignity of fallen greatness, and without any querulous or angry complaining at this unlivable source of sorrow, refusing to be comforted. Within weeks, Charles Napier and his forces occupied Sindh. After 1853 the British divided Sindh into districts and later made it part of British India's Bombay Presidency. Sibgatullah Shah Rashidi pioneered the Sindhi Muslim Her movement against the British Raj. He was hanged on 20 March 1943 in Hyderabad, Sindh. His burial place is not known. During the British period, railways, printing presses and bridges were introduced in the province. Writers like Mirza Kalik Beg compiled and traced the literary history of Sindh. Although Sindh had a culture of religious syncretism, communal harmony and tolerance due to Sindh's strong Sufi culture in which both Sindhi Muslims and Sindhi Hindus partook, the mostly Muslim peasantry was oppressed by the Hindu moneylending class and also by the landed Muslim elite. Sindhi Muslims eventually demanded the separation of Sindh from the Bombay Presidency, a move opposed by Sindhi Hindus. Another campaign in the early 20th century which attracted Sindhi Muslims was the Khilafat movement, for which support had been generated by the Sufi PIRS of Sindh. In that time period Sindh emerged at the forefront of the Khilafat cause. By 1936 Sindh was separated from the Bombay Presidency. Elections in 1937 resulted in local Sindhi Muslim parties winning the bulk of seats. By the mid-1940s the Muslim League gained a foothold in the province and after winning over the support of local Sufi PIRS, came to have the support of the overwhelming majority of Sindhi Muslims for its campaign to create Pakistan. Independence of Pakistan At the time of partition, there were 1,400,000 Hindu Sindhis, dominating the province's upper middle class. There was very little communal violence in Sindh, in comparison to Punjab. Communal violence in Ajmer, India, in December 1947 led to Muslim refugees crossing over the Thar Desert to Sindh in Pakistan. This sparked riots in Hyderabad and later in Karachi, although less than 500 Hindu were killed in Sindh between 1947–48 as Sindhi Muslims largely resisted calls to turn against their Hindu neighbours. Hundreds of thousands of Sindhi Hindus fled to India. The arrival of Sindhi Hindu refugees in the Indian town of Ghadra sparked the March 1948 anti-Muslim riots there which led to an emigration of Ganchi Muslims from Ghadra to Pakistan. Indian Muslims from the United Provinces, Central Provinces and Bombay continued migrating to and settling in Sindh's urban centres throughout the 1950s and 1960s. <laughs> Population <laughs> Demographics Sindh has the second highest human development index out of all of Pakistan's provinces at 0.628. The 2017 census of Pakistan indicated a population of 47.9 million. The population of Sindh increased 2.41% annually since the census of 1998. Sindh was the least gainer of population among provinces during this period. More than half of the population are urban dwellers, mainly found in Karachi, Hyderabad, Sukkar, Murpurkas, Nabashad district and Larkana. 
Sindhi is the sole official language of Sindh since the 19th century. The Sindhis as a whole are composed of original descendants of an ancient population known as Samat. Sub groups related to the Baloch origin are found in interior Sindh and to a lesser extent Sindhis of Pashtun origins. Sindhis of Balochi origins make up about 30% of the total Sindhi population, although they speak Sindhi Sariki as their native tongue, while Urdu speaking Muhahirs make up over 19% of the total population of the province, while Punjabi are 10% and Pashtuns represent 7%. In August 1947, before the partition of India, the total population of Sindh was 38, 87,070 out of which 28, 32,000 were Muslims and 10, 15,000 were Hindus. According to Dr. Akhtar Balak, professor at University of Karachi, the Balak migrated from Baluchistan during the Little Ice Age. This is conventionally defined as a period extending from the 16th to the 19th centuries, or alternatively, from about 1300 to about 1850. Although climatologists and historians working with local records no longer expect to agree on either the start or end dates of this period, which varied according to local conditions. Professor Balak said the climate of Baluchistan was very cold and the region was inhabitable during the winter, so the Balak people in waves migrated and settled in Sindh and Punjab. Religions Islam in Sindh has a strong Sufi ethos with numerous Muslim saints and mystics, such as the Sufi poet Shah Abdul Latif Bittai, having lived in Sindh historically. One popular legend which highlights the strong Sufi presence in Sindh is that 125,000 Sufi saints and mystics are buried on Makli Hill near Thatta. The development of Sufism in Sindh was similar to the development of Sufism in other parts of the Muslim world. In the 16th century, two Sufi tariqat orders, Qadriya and Naqshbandiya, were introduced in Sindh. Sufism continues to play an important role in the daily lives of Sindhis. Sindh also has Pakistan's highest percentage of Hindu residents, with 7.5% of Sindh's population overall, and 11.56% of Sindh's rural population, classifying itself as Hindu, and over 40% of residents in Tharparkar district identifying themselves as Hindu. The communal harmony between Sindhi Muslims and Hindus is an example of Sindh's pluralistic and tolerant Sufi culture. Languages Sindhi language Sindhi Arabic script, SNI is spoken by more than 30 million people in 2017 in the province of Sindh. Sindhi like Punjabi, is an Indo-European language, both are linguistically considered to be the daughter languages of Sanskrit. Balochi and Saraika have also influenced Sindhi which also accommodates substantial Persian, Turkish and Arabic words. Sindhi is written in a modified Arabic script. Today, Sindhi in Pakistan is heavily influenced by Urdu with more borrowed Perso-Arabic elements, while Sindhi in India is influenced by Hindi and borrows more elements from Sanskrit. Key dialects of Sindhi include Kuchi, Lassi, Mamoni, Lari, Vikoli, Utradi, Macharya and Duxlanu which is spoken by Sindhi Hindus. Other languages Other languages in the province include Gujarati and Parkari Koli sometimes called just Parkari, a language is spoken by only 250,000 natives of Sindh according to a 1995 estimate, only 7.3% of people Karachi's residents are Sindhi speaking. Karachi is populated by Muhahirs who speak Urdu. Other immigrant communities in Karachi are Pashtuns from Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjabis from Punjab and other linguistic groups from various regions of Pakistan. Geography and nature Sindh is in the western corner of South Asia, bordering the Iranian plateau in the west. Geographically it is the third largest province of Pakistan, stretching about 579 kilometers 360 miles from north to south and 442 kilometers 275 miles extreme or 281 kilometers 175 miles average from east to west with an area of 140,915 square kilometers 54,408 square miles of Pakistani territory. 
Sindh is bounded by the Thar Desert to the east, the Kir Thar Mountains to the west and the Arabian Sea in the south. In the center is a fertile plain along the Indus River. <laughs> Flora The province is mostly arid with scant vegetation except for the irrigated Indus Valley. The dwarf palm, Acacia rupestris care, and Ticomela undulata lohero trees are typical of the western hill region. In the Indus Valley, the Acacia nilotica babul babur is the most dominant and occurs in thick forests along the Indus banks. The Azadarashta indica neem, nim, Zizifis vulgaris beer, ber, Tamarix orientalis jujubali, and Capris afila career are among the more common trees. Mango, date palms and the more recently introduced banana, guava, orange and chiku are the typical fruit-bearing trees. The coastal strip and the creeks abound in semi-aquatic and aquatic plants and the inshore Indus Delta Islands have forests of Avicennia tomentosa and Seriops candaliana trees. Water lilies grow in abundance in the numerous lake and ponds, particularly in the lower Sindh region. Fauna Among the wild animals, the Sindh ibex Sarah, blackbuck, wild sheep Uriel or Gadh, and wild bear are found in the western rocky range. The leopard is now rare and the Asiatic cheetah extinct. The parang large tiger cat or fishing cat of the eastern desert region is also disappearing. Deer occur in the lower rocky plains and in the eastern region, as do the striped hyena Carrick, jackal, fox, porcupine, common grey mongoose and hedgehog. The Sindhi fakari, red lynx or caracal cat, is found in some areas. Fartho hog deer, and wild bear occur, particularly in the central inundation belt. There are bats, lizards and reptiles, including the cobra, lundi viper, and the mysterious Sindh krite of the Thar region, which is supposed to suck the victim's breath in his sleep. Some unusual sightings of Asian cheetah occurred in 2003 near the Baluchistan border in Kirthar Mountains. The rare Hubara bustard finds Sin's warm climate suitable to rest and mate. Unfortunately, it is hunted by locals and foreigners. Crocodiles are rare and inhabit only the backwaters of the Indus, eastern Nara Channel and Karachi backwater. Besides a large variety of marine fish, the plumbeous dolphin, the beak dolphin, rorqual or blue whale and skates frequent the seas along the Sindh coast. The palo sable fish, a marine fish, ascends the Indus annually from February to April to spawn. The Indus River dolphin is among the most endangered species in Pakistan and is found in the part of the Indus River in northern Sindh. Hog deer and wild bear occur, particularly in the central inundation belt. Although Sindh has a semi-arid climate, through its coastal and riverine forests, its huge fresh water lakes and mountains and deserts, Sindh supports a large amount of varied wildlife. Due to the semi-arid climate of Sindh the left-out forests support an average population of jackals and snakes. The national parks established by the government of Pakistan in collaboration with many organizations such as World Wide Fund for Nature and Sindh Wildlife Department support a huge variety of animals and birds. The Kirthar National Park in the Kirthar Range spreads over more than 3,000 square kilometers of desert, stunted tree forests and a lake. The KNP supports Sindh ibex, wild sheep Uriel, and black bear along with the rare leopard. There are also occasional sightings of the Sindhi fakari, ped lynx or caracal cat. There is a project to introduce tigers and Asian elephants to in KNP near the huge Hub Dam Lake. Between July and November when the monsoon winds blow onshore from the ocean, giant olive ridley turtles lay their eggs along the seaward side. The turtles are protected species. After the mothers lay and leave them buried under the sands the SWD and WWF officials take the eggs and protect them until they are hatched to keep them from predators. <laughs> Climate Sindh lies in a tropical to subtropical region, it is hot in the summer and mild to warm in winter. Temperatures frequently rise above 46 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit between May and August, and the minimum average temperature of 2 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit occurs during December and January in the northern and higher elevated regions. The annual rainfall averages about 7 inches, falling mainly during July and August. 
The southwest monsoon wind begins in mid-February and continues until the end of September, whereas the cool northerly wind blows during the winter months from October to January. Sindh lies between the two monsoons. The southwest monsoon from the Indian Ocean and the northeast or retreating monsoon, deflected towards it by the Himalayan mountains, and escapes the influence of both. The region's scarcity of rainfall is compensated by the inundation of the Indus twice a year, caused by the spring and summer melting of Himalayan snow and by rainfall in the monsoon season. Sindh is divided into three climatic regions, Siro the upper region, centered on Jacobabad, Wicholo the middle region, centered on Hyderabad, and Lar the lower region, centered on Karachi. The thermal equator passes through upper Sindh, where the air is generally very dry. Central Sindh's temperatures are generally lower than those of Upper Sindh but higher than those of Lower Sindh. Dry hot days and cool nights are typical during the summer. Central Sindh's maximum temperature typically reaches 43 to 44 degrees Celsius 109 to 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Lower Sindh has a damper and humid maritime climate affected by the southwestern winds in summer and northeastern winds in winter, with lower rainfall than Central Sindh. Lower Sindh's maximum temperature reaches about 35 to 38 degrees Celsius, 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the Kirthar range at 1800 meters, 5900 feet and higher at Gorakh Hill and other peaks in Dadu district, temperatures near freezing have been recorded and brief snowfall is received in the winters. Topic: <laughs> Major cities. Topic Government Topic Sindh Province The Provincial Assembly of Sindh is a unicameral and consists of 168 seats, of which 5% are reserved for non Muslims and 17% for women. The provincial capital of Sindh is Karachi. The provincial government is led by chief minister who is directly elected by the popular and landslide votes. The governor serves as a ceremonial representative nominated and appointed by the president of Pakistan. The administrative boss of the province who is in charge of the bureaucracy is the chief secretary Sindh, who is appointed by the prime minister of Pakistan. Most of the influential Sindhi tribes in the province are involved in Pakistan's politics. In addition, Sindh's politics leans towards the left-wing and its political culture serves as a dominant place for the left-wing spectrum in the country. The province's trend towards the Pakistan People's Party and away from the Pakistan Muslim League can be seen in nationwide general elections, in which, Sindh is a stronghold of the Pakistan People's Party PPP. The PML -N has a limited support due to its center right agenda. In metropolitan cities such as Karachi and Hyderabad, the MQM, another left wing party with the support of Muhahirs, has a considerable vote bank and support. Minor leftist parties such as People's Movement also found support in rural areas of the province. <laughs> Divisions In 2008, after the public elections, the new government decided to restore the structure of divisions of all provinces. In Sindh after the lapse of the local government's body's term in 2010 the divisional commissioner's system was to be restored. In July 2011, following excessive violence in the city of Karachi and after the political split between the ruling PPP and the majority party in Sindh, the MQM and after the resignation of the MQM governor of Sindh, PPP and the government of Sindh decided to restore the commissionerate system in the province. As a consequence, the five divisions of Sindh were restored, namely Karachi, Hyderabad, Sukkur, Murpurkas and Larkana with their respective districts. Subsequently, two new divisions have been added in Sindh, Banbor and Nawab Shah, Shahid Benazirabad Division. Karachi district has been demerged into its five original constituent districts, Karachi East, Karachi West, Karachi Central, Karachi South and Malir. Recently Korangi has been upgraded to the status of 6th district of Karachi. These six districts form the Karachi division now. Topic: Districts. Topic: Economy. 
Sindh has the second largest economy in Pakistan. A 2016 study commissioned by Pakistan Ministry of Planning found that urban Sindh and northern Punjab province are the most prosperous regions in Pakistan. Its GDP per capita was $1,400 in 2010 which is 50% more than the rest of the nation or 35% more than the national average. Historically, Sindh's contribution to Pakistan's GDP has been between 30% to 32.7%. Its share in the service sector has ranged from 21% to 27.8% and in the agriculture sector from 21.4% to 27.7%. Performance-wise, its best sector is the manufacturing sector, where its share has ranged from 36.7% to 46.5%. Endowed with coastal access, Sindh is a major center of economic activity in Pakistan and has a highly diversified economy ranging from heavy industry and finance centered in Karachi to a substantial agricultural base along the Indus. Manufacturing includes machine products, cement, plastics, and other goods. Sindh is Pakistan's most natural gas producing province. Agriculture is very important in Sindh with cotton, rice, wheat, sugar cane, dates, bananas, and mangoes as the most important crops. The largest and finer quality of rice is produced in Larkano district. Sindh is the richest province of Pakistan in natural resources of gas, petrol, and coal. Education The following is a chart of the education market of Sindh estimated by the government in 1998. Major public and private educational institutes in Sindh include Culture The rich culture, art and architectural landscape of Sindh have fascinated historians. The culture, folktales, art and music of Sindh form a mosaic of human history. Arts and crafts The traditions of Sindhi craftwork reflect the cumulative influence of 5,000 years of invaders and settlers, whose modes of art were eventually assimilated into the culture. The elegant floral and geometrical designs that decorate everyday objects—whether of clay, metal, wood, stone or fabric—can be traced to Muslim influence. Though chiefly an agricultural and pastoral province, Sindh has a reputation for adrix, pottery, leatherwork, carpets, textiles and silk cloths which, in design and finish, are matchless. The chief articles produced are blankets, coarse cotton cloth Susie, camel fittings, metalwork, lacquered work, enamel, gold and silver embroidery. Hala is famous for pottery and tiles, bubak for carpets, nasirpur, gambat and thatta for cotton lunges and khes. Other popular crafts include the earthenware of Johi, the metal vessels of Shikarpur, the rally quilt, embroidery and leather articles of Tharparkar, and the lacquered work of Kankot. Prehistoric finds from archaeological sites like Mohenjo Daro, engravings in graveyards, and the architectural designs of Makli and other tombs have provided ample evidence of the people's literary and musical traditions. Painting and calligraphy have developed in recent times. Some young trained men have taken up commercial art. Topic: <inaudible> Cultural heritage. Sindh has a rich heritage of traditional handicraft that has evolved over the centuries. Perhaps the most professed exposition of Sindhi culture is in the handicrafts of Hala, a town some 30 kilometers from Hyderabad. Hala's artisans manufacture high-quality and impressively priced wooden handicrafts, textiles, paintings, handmade paper products, and blue pottery. Lacquered wood works known as jandi, painting on wood, tiles, and pottery known as kashi, hand-weaved textiles including kadi, susi, and adrix are synonymous with Sindhi culture preserved in Hala's handicraft. The Small and Medium Enterprises Authority is planning to set up an organization of artisans to empower the community. SMEDA is publishing a directory of the artisans so that exporters can directly contact them. Hala is the home of a remarkable variety of traditional crafts and traditional handicrafts that carry with them centuries of skill that has woven magic into the motifs and designs used. Sindh is known the world over for its handicrafts and arts. 
The work of Sindhi artisans was sold in ancient markets of Damascus, Baghdad, Basra, Istanbul, Cairo and Samarkand. Referring to the lacquer work on wood locally known as Jandi, T. Poston an English traveller who visited Sindh in the early 19th century asserted that the articles of Hala could be compared with exquisite specimens of China. Technological improvements such as the spinning wheel and treadle in the weaver's loom were gradually introduced and the processes of designing, dyeing and printing by block were refined. The refined, lightweight, colorful, washable fabrics from Hala became a luxury for people used to the woolens and linens of the age. The Adric has existed in Sin since the birth of its civilization. The color blue is predominantly used for Adrics. Sindh was traditionally a large producer of indigo and cotton cloth and both used to be exported to the Middle East. The adric is a mark of respect when it is given to an honored guest or friend. In Sindh, it is most commonly given as a gift at Eid, at weddings, or on other special occasions like a homecoming. The rally, also known as Rili, Reli, Rally, Gindi or other names, or patchwork quilt, is another Sindhi icon and part of the heritage and culture. Most Sindhi homes have many rallies one for each member of the family and a few spare for guests. The rally is made with small pieces of cloth of geometrical shapes sewn together to create intricate designs. They may be used as a bedspread or a blanket and are often given as gifts to friends and guests. Non-governmental organizations NGOs, such as the World Wildlife Fund, Pakistan, play an important role to promote the culture of sin. They provide training to women artisans in the interior of sin so they get a source of income. They promote their products under the name of Crafts Forever. Many women in rural Sindh are skilled in the production of caps. Sindhi caps are manufactured commercially on a small scale at New Saidabad and Hala New. These are in demand with visitors from Karachi and other places, however, these manufacturing units have a limited production capacity. Sindhi people began celebrating Sindhi Topi Day on December 6, 2009, to preserve the historical culture of Sindh by wearing Adric and Sindhi Topi. <laughs> Places of interest Tourist sites include the ruins of Mohenjo Daro near the city of Larkana, Runi Khat, Khat Deji, the Jain temples of Nangar Parker, and the historic temple of Sadu Bella, Sukkar. Islamic architecture is quite prominent in the province. Its numerous mausoleums include the ancient Shabazz Qalandar Mausoleum. Sashal Sarmast Sufi poet Daras near Ranipur. See also equals equals notes